everyone, and welcome to our very last Harness Workshop of 2022. I'm happy you're here. I see a few people still coming in. Uh, it's been an awesome year, and I'm already looking forward to the next, and I hope you guys feel the same. For those of you brand new to Harness, Harness Fundraising Solutions have been part of life-saving efforts around the world, and we continue to develop and support new tools to help nonprofits thrive and grow. If this is your first Harness webinar, you should know they are free, live, and designed to bring in top industry experts to answer your biggest questions each month. And if you're looking for how to use Harness better, you can always reach out to our customer success team, aka the happiness team. They are always happy to hear from you as well. However, if you're interested in this topic or similar topics, you can head to our webinar library or our blog where you'll find a range of topics from stewardship to getting more monthly donors to understanding how to get a return on your fundraising investment. My name is Simone. I am Marketing Director here at Harness and your host today, chiming in from sunny Tampa, Florida. The session today is How to Supercharge Your Giving Tuesday, led by Michael Dozier. He is the former, he's a former nonprofit CEO who is the principal founder and CEO of Carrington Holland and Lay LLC. That's a nonprofit consulting service that provides comprehensive nonprofit services for community-based, faith-based, and other nonprofit organizations. Michael provides hands-on assistance, training, and consultative guidance for nonprofit organizations who are in need of organizational and fund development assistance. Michael's expertise consists of following the following services, donor development, fundraising, major gift solicitation, and legal nonprofit compliance assistance, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising assistance, developing nonprofit development offices for fund development, board and fund development for general operational assistance, and that list goes on. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Michael to the stage. Michael, we're so glad to have you. But thank you, Simone. I'm really happy and excited to be here today. We're in for a great webinar today. So I'm looking forward to uh, talking a few minutes about uh, Giving Tuesday and the importance of Giving Tuesday. Yeah, absolutely. We're all excited to have you here. I see people still coming in, but I will give you the screen. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. And uh, just basically, everyone, welcome. And uh, and I do thank you for taking out time out to register for this webinar. And I can tell you with Giving Tuesday, it's important to have a excellent Giving Tuesday campaign. Now, as you already know, Giving Tuesday, or should know, or maybe not, maybe not know, Giving Tuesday always happens every year. And it's the first, one thing about Giving Tuesday, it's the first Tuesday after Thanksgiving. One thing I want you to remember is in 2021, uh, there were over $2.7 billion raised on Giving Tuesday. And that's amazing for nonprofits around the world. So as you think about Giving Tuesday, think about the National International Day of Giving because you're giving and you're, you're highlighting your work, you're talking about what you're wanting to do and you're showcasing and you're getting people engaged. One thing I want you to think about is every year as you plan your fund development efforts and, and what you're looking to do, you always want to make sure that you can incorporate Giving Tuesday into your fund development plan. You know why? Because we're right in the midst of the seasonal holiday giving phase where you can get a lot of your donation. Between Giving Tuesday and the end of the year campaign, you can significantly generate a lot of income for your nonprofit organization. The key is always going to be planning as you move forward and do what you're doing and everything. So, so it's very important to keep that in mind as you move forward. So every year, plan for Giving Tuesday, but also plan for uh, the end of the year campaign. When you do them both, combine together, you can secure about 30% of your income that you targeted for that year. So it's important to plan. Now, here's the thing in the planning part. I've worked with clients who do Giving Tuesday campaigns uh, some wait the day of Giving Tuesday. This year is going to be the 29th of November. But I have a lot of clients who I've encouraged to start their campaign early, which I'm talking about now, where they begin their campaign. So from your nonprofit, the holiday season opened the door for opportunity for fundraising success. And there's no better way to kick off the successful year-end fundraising push than to participate in your Giving Tuesday, okay? All right, moving ahead. Michael, do you want to switch uh, takeover presentation? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I do. Okay, I think I, I, I'm a new one. Simone's been great uh, instructing me along the way. So let's see here. Uh, there we go. All right, poll number one. 
Have Wait, you... I, don't, I don't see your screen yet, and I'll start. The oh, poll. you don't see it? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, hang on. Let Go me just check. Hang on. Let's see. I still don't see it, Simone. Nope. You just probably have to hit share screen and share the full screen. Okay, hang on. Let me try it again. Hang on one second here. Oops. I think I am the one. We we have gone through this and everything, so bear with me just a minute. I am the culprit here. It's okay, everything. we have a poll Thank and we're getting some answers in. Yes, indeed. Hang on. I'm looking for, okay, I'm looking for it, so bear with me. And Simone, you're not seeing anything, correct? Nope. Do you want me to just control your screen? Yeah, go ahead and control it. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, ma'am. I think you'll be excited about this poll. We have about yeah. 70, actually 81% of the people who have answered. So we'll wait for a few more and then we'll okay. go ahead and get the results. Perfect, 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 perfect. Very good. Very good. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm looking at those poll numbers. Yes, interesting. And I'm and as Simone, I definitely see some said yes, and it went great. That is very good and everything. And I see some who have not done it yet as well, too, looking at these numbers. That's awesome for them. Mm -hmm. And also, I hope that everybody who says it wasn't successful gets some really good tips today because I know there's a really good presentation to come. Yes, okay. we're going to get you motivated to, to get this campaign going. Our, let, Simone, let me know when you do with the polling and everything, and I'll continue to talk. Yep, I ended. I already went. Okay, to perfect. All right. Uh, Giving Tuesday, as we mentioned again, what and when in Giving Tuesday is a global generosity and charitable giving that takes place on the first Tuesday after Thanksgiving in the U.S. It's a great day for tapping into holiday generosity and it's an increasing exposure for your organization, which is why you need to start prepping and preparing now. Uh, as I know, as I stated before, this year's Giving Tuesday is November the 29th, the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. All right, we're going to move ahead. Uh, and they, uh, there we go. What we want you to see right now is you're going to see this video. We want you to see this is one of my clients that uh, we did in Mississippi. They were, you know, film natchez. They do a lot of films, and you're going to see a lot of celebrities in this video. But I encourage them as they were raising revenue to consider doing a, a video to let people know what your Giving Tuesday campaign could be like and how they can engage. And so I want you to take a look at this video and I want to encourage you to think about what a video could be for you as you move forward on your campaign. I think it's very important to incorporate ways to get people to give. You can go ahead and click it, Simone. Hi, this is Tate Taylor. This is Tate Taylor. Yes. Okay, Buster Jordan. I'm Viola Davis, and guess what day it is? It's Giving Tuesday, and I want to tell you about an organization that is bringing change to Mississippi. Film Natchez. Film Natchez. Film Natchez. This Giving Tuesday, we are raising funds that help us provide education statewide by connecting students with industry leaders. It gives these students the chance to stay in their community. and to keep change alive. Film Natchez, one of my absolute favorite places to film creates these opportunities through job training and film production for both high school and college students. It provides them a chance to build a career in the arts. And with your generous support, we're able to provide our students the tools and the behind the scenes field trips, educational scholarships, tuition assistance, and even paid internships. Help us build a community of emerging storytellers and support film matches. Perfect. Uh, I would love to know maybe some comments in the chat. What did you think about Film Natchez's uh, video? Of course, they were able to use celebrities to help advocate their cause, but these are the celebrities that they've worked with in the past that they call out. And one thing I want you to think about is, is you do your Giving Tuesday campaign, it, it all starts with gathering your team together. You got to put the team together, and the team consists of more than just your staff. It consists of volunteers. It can consist of board members. It can consist of community partners that you've worked with in the past. It can even consist of people who receive your services. Get them to be part of your team as you put together your team, your campaign for Giving Tuesday. Because the reason is you want a, a good team, a diversified team of people, is because it can help you with your fund development efforts as you raise funds for Giving Tuesday. It lets people to know what's going on with your campaign. So it's very important 
and put your team of influencers, ambassadors, and all these people together, and you start with the team. Moving along. One thing, one thing about uh, one thing about uh, giving Tuesday. I'm actually, hang on one second. I'm trying to actually see the slide to get on my screen with you, Simone, for whatever. There we go. All right. One of the things we want to do is uh, number one, we want to use a one of the things you could do is use a text fundraising campaign. And that's a good way to engage people. And what we mean by that is, uh, if you're not incorporating text to give or some type of text into the, to, to, uh, to reach your donor, you need, to, you need to do that. And if you don't have a platform for doing it, it is good Hornets is sponsoring this webinar because Hornets can provide all those services for you to do that, to get engaged and, and, and have a text fundraising campaign. Now, some things we want you to easily remember is uh, uh, you want you want an easy to remember keyword for your campaign, which is going to be important. It could be it can maybe be uh, it can maybe be uh, uh, moving forward with Giving Tuesday. I'm just pulling that off the tip of my head, but you want something that's going to catch attention to your potential donors that you're out there looking to, to get. Your supporters, we need to opt in to your text fundraising campaign by sending a specific keyword to your organization. Don't choose something long, which is the key. Uh, you don't want nothing long and complex. You want to keep it simple, like uh, the example it gives here, Westwood Humane Society Giving Tuesday campaign, try WHS21. It's simple. It's easy to do. And the beauty of it is you can generate and connect with your donors as you're moving forward. Moving along next. All right. Uh, uh, next, moving along here. Uh, Okay, I'm trying to put it up on my screen for whatever reason. I am trying to, to get it to act right on my side. There we go. Build your campaign contact list. This is very, very important. For a text fundraising campaign to be successful, as I mentioned before, you definitely want a bunch of supporters and ambassadors and advocates. You, here's the key. You got to make sure as you tailor your message to different groups of people, you want to create a segmented contact list. I always tell nonprofit people when you are focused on peer to peer fundraising, using your peers to give, to get engaged in your campaign. I always tell people if you don't, if you don't have a list, start with the people who you provided services with. Start with people who have donated to your organization. Start with people who have volunteered to help your organization participate in an event or maybe given a gift before, those are the people you want to target and move forward with and you can get them engaged. You don't want to know anyone by sending unwanted messages. So, so be careful as you crafting your messages to new supporters and, and you got to build a list of people. And here's the thing you can do as well too with your board people. One of the things you can do is you can encourage your board people to identify lists of potential new supporters that can help with the cause as well too. That's something they can engage and do. One of the things I do with a lot of my nonprofit clients is I ask them to think about the people that they want to give to. Who are the people you work with, for instance? Who are the people that uh, you maybe go to church with? Who are the people that uh, you maybe have dinner with? Who you invite to the Thanksgiving table? These people can be supporters that can help you, that can really push your campaign forward as you move forward. Also, uh, uh, bullet point two, plan a message for before, during, and after your campaign. Those are three important components, before, during, and after your campaign. You're going to need different messages for different phases of your campaign. You, for instance, you might have save the date reminders and early access to your donation form beforehand. And on giving Tuesday day up, send your main donation appeal. Your message will be important after the fact, and you need to thank your donors and encourage them to continue supporting your mission. Now, one of the things I do different with a lot of my clients now, I encourage them, don't wait until the day of giving Tuesday to do your campaign. As I mentioned before, start it now. I even had clients I'm working with start in October. And let me tell you what they've done. I encourage them every week from now to Giving Tuesday, do something per week on social media to highlight your Giving Tuesday campaign. With your group of people you bring to the table, you could have a Giving Tuesday campaign go as you move forward, but every week you raise money or do an event. Let me give you an example. Let's say, for instance, if I ask you the question, do you have any celebrities or maybe athletes, famous athletes, like football players, basketball players, baseball players, and they're from your hometown? 
One of the things you could do if, you, if so you've gotten famous people from your community, you can get them engaged in your campaign a couple of ways. You can get them engaged by getting them to retweet, retweet the, uh, your Giving Tuesday campaign or their own page and encourage their supporters to get engaged. Imagine if you did that, you probably get a lot of donations coming in because they're, they're a part of your campaign. Now, if you've got that famous football player, celebrity, or whoever, what you can do is get them to donate something to you. Like, for instance, maybe a signed autographed football jersey, basketball jersey, baseball jersey. And again, if you're lucky enough and they're really invested in your campaign, ask them to go on live with you to kick off your campaign for that week. For instance, well, audit, they can go on with you, for instance, like a Facebook Live and, and wherever they are and do it for about two or three minutes and they can talk about where they, why they're engaging your campaign and how, uh, how, you, how you can make a difference by giving, here's the key. And you raffle that, uh, everybody who makes a donation to that jersey or want to get it, whatever the donation is, they enter into a, a raffle to get that jersey. Run that campaign for about a week and then the, probably Sunday or Monday, uh, you know, the following week, you go ahead and uh, you come back and announce who the winner is. You do it live on your social media thread, you're live, and you pick the winner so people can see you're doing it. The next week, you do a different item. You have something to give, maybe a gift set. I got one client who, 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 who's doing a football jersey, but they're also doing a luggage set as well, too, worth over uh, $1,000 worth of luggage. They got a store to donate that luggage. And speaking of that, one of the things you can do moving forward is, is partner with your stores, co get corporate sponsorships and things like that. For instance, uh, uh, let's use the bank, for instance. If your nonprofit is already has a bank account at a certain bank, you can get your bank to help you sponsor your Giving Tuesday campaign. Maybe ask them to consider matching dollar per dollar for what you raise. That may be a good way to generate money. Or, and one thing you could do is say uh, you can offer by getting people engaged, they can partnership with you by offering people who, who sign up for new accounts with that bank, maybe some discounts or maybe a saving bond, a $25 saving bond or whatever. Some incentive to get them engaged in your campaign to help you with your campaign moving forward. Corporate sponsorships and match the match are good as you move forward. We're going to move to the next slide. Am I one behind or is this? Say that again now, I'm sorry. Are you, are you on peer-to-peer -peer now? Just want to uh, Yes, I, I'm on, yes, I am, definitely, I'm here. Okay. Uh, number two, make your Giving Tuesday campaign a peer-to-peer -peer spin. And how we want to do that? Peer-to-peer -peer should be the way you should fundraise anyway. I get a lot of clients because I write grants as well too. The first thing they come to me, they always want to uh, look at getting grants for their organization. And I always try to get them away from that. And I say, for what you're gonna pay me to write this grant that you may or may not get, you will be wise to spend your money doing peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And peer-to-peer -peer is using your contacts and your network, using your board people, your volunteers people to get them engaged. The reason is, if you use the peer-to-peer -peer method, you can raise more money and you get more bang for your buck. Also, uh, you gamify the campaign. For instance, like using a fundraising thermometer and raffle for the supporters who pull in the most fundraising dollars to motivate your donor. A little competition can go a long way in helping you to secure donations you're trying to get. One thing I've discovered, and I'm going to share a campaign I did. I did a campaign, a Giving Tuesday campaign with one of my clients, Warrior Nation Ministry. And I told them, let's go ahead and do the campaign early. We're not going to wait the day of. They started in September raising money. They had a following, about 500,000 people. And what they did was everybody, for instance, they had donors who made donations. And when they made donations, I encouraged them, get some of your donors who make donations to do their own uh, maybe two minute video or why they gave to the organization, why it was important to give. And once, and, and then share that on social media to get other people to encourage. So you want to use that peer to peer process because it works. So encourage social sharing. Social sharing is the thing that works. One of the things, if you're doing it on Facebook, I always tell my clients this is uh, don't just post one time. You got to be strategic in the posting that you're doing. For instance, you may need to post that morning. You may need to post around noontime and you might want to post at night. The reason is, if you know anything about social media, I, if I'm friends with you on Facebook, 
I may not get your post until a week from now. So you want to make sure you increase the opportunity it can be shared and seen. You may also, that may give you opportunity to just buy an ad and do it as well too, because ad on social media are not that expensive. The key is to get more people to see it and you got to share it. Now, Facebook is one way to go. I definitely strongly recommend Twitter as well and Instagram. Because the beauty of that, if you're following celebrities on Instagram or Twitter, get them engaged in your campaign. Ask them to retweet it that you're raising money. Now, if you're asking them to retweet your campaign, you want to make sure your campaign banner has all the information on link where people can go right to that donate button and see about your organization as you move forward. All right, moving along. Uh, so you got to choose the right platform that will set you up to get the most out of your campaign. And this is where Harness comes in. And I've said this, I've, I've seen many different campaigns out there and even work with another organization as well too. But Harness really has the best fundraising campaign it is. The reason I say that is, is because it's easy to navigate. It's easy to do different things and it gives you a great user experience as you're navigating the platform. And guess what? All your supporters and people who are part of your team can use the platform as well, too. Now, you can create everything you need for your campaign with Harness Peer-to-Peer -peer Fundraising Platform. It, gives you, it empowers you to create your own branded fundraising page. You communicate with participants via email and integrate with Facebook fundraisers. This platform also gives you the opportunity to provide personal fundraising dashboard. You can see the metrics that you're looking for, for participants and tools to, to gamify the campaign as you're moving forward. All right, next. Uh, team up with local news. This is very, very important you want to do. If you are in a community that has a, that has a news station or close by, you want a partnership with them. And the partnership can consist of like doing an annual food drive, a gift drive around the holidays. Now, one of the things you can do is uh, you can help solicit mon monetary donations for your organization in kind. Plus, you get free publicity when you partnership with the local news as you move forward and as, as you're doing different things. So look at utilizing the local news. One way to get engaged with the local news is, uh, is for instance, uh, 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 you want, if you're able to, get involved, get your city council or a mayor's office involved. They can do it with a, with definitely with a, uh, they can do it many different ways. They can do a resolution, uh, you know, highlighting what you're doing and, and, and you would want them to do that to encourage people to get engaged with your campaign for the month. Have a Giving Tuesday month where you recognize and Giving Tuesday, take those photos with those elected officials and get them engaged as you're doing it. All right, number four, host an auction. This is a good way you could do it. Giving Tuesday present extra opportunities for your nonprofit to host a successful auction. Uh, and one thing about an auction is you get many different ideas. For instance, holiday presents or goodie baskets are good. Holiday hams or turkeys are always a winner. A cater holiday meals, if you can get that. A bed and breakfast, a hotel stay, that would get me right there. Tropical uh, vacation packages, you can get ski resorts. Plane tickets is always a winner. You can maybe get Delta, Southwest, or whoever in your area. Get them to partnership with you on this when you reach out to their corporate people in their office, tell them what you're doing. And you could also use that as a raffle off as well, too. Uh, holiday decor like uh, garland. You can put uh, pre-decorated themed Christmas trees, outdoor recreation items such as tie out snowballs and breach umbrella, and tickets to holiday things, choir or dance performances, all those things are important as you move forward. Also, whatever you choose to auction out, you want to make sure you streamline your auction experience with fast registration, which is going to be important, check-in and easy bidding. That's why if you've got a great platform like Hornets, uh, they make it simple to engage the, the people you're trying to get. Think like this. If someone's coming to your web page to check you out, they're considering making a donation for you. So if they're considering making a donation for you, you want to make sure that their donation experience is good. And so that's why it's important to get a good platform. You will be surprised when a nonprofit client or a potential client reach out to me and I start asking them uh, questions to see where they are as far as infrastructure, where they need to be. Uh, and I, one of the questions I ask, do you have a fundraising platform? They don't. 
they can't expect to raise as much as they could unless they got a successful platform. It allows you to do the things you need to do to generate and raise money and make the experience good. And that platform allows other people to get engaged. If a client, and I'm gonna use this for an example, when a client come to me and say, Michael, we need your help set up a 501c3 organization. You know what I do? I say, uh, I say, I would say this. I, I say, you want to make sure your website is, is it's got a great fundraising platform, but you want when people go to that website on the tabs of it, there should be a tab that says ways to get involved. On that ways to get involved tab should include donation. But guess what else it should include? It should allow you as a potential donor to do your own fundraising campaign for the organization where you click on fundraise for the organization, where you fundraise and do your fundraising. And guess what? While you're doing that fundraising campaign, the staff of that organization don't have to get engaged. They just let you do your fundraising campaign. And when you get through with your fundraising campaign, that money goes to the organization. Only when you have a fundraising platform are you allowed to do that. So fundraising platform is good. It's an option to get other people engaged with your organization. Pro tip I want you to think about, get as many of your sponsors involved as possible, whether that means donating items, providing a venue for the day of, business owners will love having the opportunity to make a difference on Giving Tuesday. They're looking for things to do in your community. Get them engaged and give them opportunity where they can brand their organization as well too as you move forward. Little number, let's look at point number five. Try a modernized telethon. A, a traditional telethon, as you know, is a fundraising event on television during which donors can call in and give to the cause. A, a telethon typically consists of entertainment, commentary about the call, and that some kind can go on for hours or even days, as you know. You remember the, uh, uh, the Jerry Lewis telethons, how they used to go. You can put a twist on a typical telethon by hosting your own on a platform like Facebook Live or Twist. Ask local performers to appear on your live stream or maybe send in a video performance recorded ahead of time. You can even interview beneficiaries, volunteer staff, or board members to give your telethon viewers a look into the impact your organization is having on your community. So it's another creative way you can do. Here's a tip for you as well, too. Make sure you're, you actively encourage viewers to make donations. That's going to be the important thing. You might even offer a small branded item like a T-shirt calendar for the coming year to motivate your supporters to get you engaged. Plus, a telethon is a great event for, for a matching gift drive. When a donor hears something like, donate within the next 20 minutes and your donation will be matched by one of our board members, they'll be inside to increase their impact. you got to engage and be willing to do it. All right, so number six, start a recurring giving campaign. Giving Tuesday may sound like a great one-off event for your organization, but you may also be worried about retaining donors in the long run. You can, you can solve this problem by choosing a more sustainable Giving Tuesday campaign idea, a recurring giving campaign. Through a recurring giving campaign, may not bring in the major gifts up front. It would give you a system for pulling in steady income stream for the month following Giving Tuesday and beyond. I always tell nonprofit people, uh, give it, you got to have a recurring giving uh, uh, campaign moving along because it's going to be the blood of your nonprofit organization. According to our fundraising statistics, monthly donors, they get 42% more in one year than one-time donors. You may be getting, for instance, $75 a, a monthly donation, but if you multiply that by 12, you're getting more than you would have thought of. So make sure a recurring giving campaign is a key for moving forward. Here's some tips on uh, setting up your recurring giving program as you do it and kick it off and publicize it on Giving Tuesday. Encourage donors to opt into recurring giving on your donation form. When they're going to donate, give them that opportunity. You're more likely to get people participating in recurring giving if you make it easy for them. If you're using harness giving, use tools like a recurring nudge or recurring mo model that encourage donors to make their gift a recurring donation. Uh, number two, communicate often with your recurring donor. You're more likely to get people participating in recurring giving if you make it easy for them. Uh, uh, you want to make sure that uh, you get them to give you as you move forward. Now, with communicating with donors, I always say this. When you get your donation, your first donation, I always thank all of your donors. 
I tell donors all the time, before you ask for a second gift, as you're cultivating your donor, thank those donors seven times before asking for another gift. First gift could be, we recognize your gift. We appreciate your support. Second one could be, we just want to say, we're on, we want to just thank you for your gift again. We're on our way to doing great things. Let's share what we're doing. Third one could be, you can highlight some of the services that have been provided with their gift. Fourth thing could be, for instance, and I like this a lot, maybe look at doing a board or staff or a combination of both where you, or even the supporters you've helped, uh, the clients you've helped, where they do a thank you video for you and send it out to you through email that let you know and thank you. And just highlight them. And then as you move forward, you let people know how their money has been spent thus far. And then by the time you get to the seven, thank you, you can go ahead and say, uh, they're more likely to give to you. It increases by 70%. So look at doing, thanking them seven times before asking for that next gift. Poll number two, if you participated in Giving Tuesday, did you run a social media campaign? I can't wait to see what your numbers look like. So answer that if you participated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Michael, I don't know if you can see the answers, but the, oh, the okay. options are, I haven't participated in a Giving Tuesday yet. No, okay. we didn't use social media. Yes, Facebook only. Yes, Facebook and Instagram only. And yes, other platforms, which Perfect. Um, everyone should share what other platforms they used in the chat. Perfect. Very good. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Excellent. We appreciate <laughs> oh, that. All yeah, right. I'll wait a few more seconds because it looks okay, like no there's some coming in. Okay. And running a social media campaign is very important as you do this and everything. Okay, I'm going to share. All right, there we go. Yes, indeed. Look at those numbers. Mm -hmm. So I'm only done Facebook only, Facebook and Instagram. And you want to get Twitter in there as well, too. Twitter, a lot of celebrities on Twitter. I don't know how Twitter's going to turn out, but still, it's a way to engage in everything. And then other platforms as well, too. Perfect. Thank you for answering that poll. So uh, uh, moving along here, uh, if I can get it pop up on my screen here, let's see, why are we not popping up? I'm trying to navigate this thing. All right, now I'm trying it again, Simone, to get it show up on my eyes. I see it, but it's not big enough for me to see it. So hang on one second as we do this. There we go, plan a social media campaign. Since Giving Twos is a global movement that is becoming more and more well-known, you know, social media campaigns are encouraging your supporters and prospects to donate, participate. And so you got to make sure you tailor your messages to the different platforms you got. Now, if you are doing Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, don't forget about LinkedIn. It's a professional link, a professional network, but use it as well too to tailor your thing and schedule your posts too. Look at utilizing some of those social media uh, uh, platforms too, to schedule your posts where they rotate and come at certain times you want them to do. Use some of those uh, tools that allow you where it pops up and show, and that way it keeps it going. You don't have to necessarily manually do it yourself, but get some of those tools to help you schedule certain times you want it to run. You know I talked about in the morning. You know I talked about in the afternoon and in the evening. Get those tools to preset those for you as you do it, as you move forward. Now, here's the key with the Giving Tuesday campaign. You always want to use hashtag Giving Tuesday. Your campaign could be hashtag Giving Tuesday wellness support. I'm just using that. Think of a fancy campaign theme name for your campaign. When you use that hashtag, it's going to be easier to find you as people looking for groups, and it's going to make it easy. Anything that relates to Giving Tuesday, your, your information will pop up as well, too. It shows people around the world that you're participating in the campaign. This makes it visible to people browsing, look to give support on Giving Tuesday. Now, also, if people are looking to give support, you know you want to sign up if you can to GivingTuesday.org as well, too. Now, leverage your organization branding in your Twitter posts, for instance. You need different messages, as I mentioned, for different stages of your campaign. Send save the date reminders, which is easy to do, and early access to your donation forms beforehand. And as I mentioned before, your messages would be important after the fact. You want to thank those donors and encourage them to continue supporting your mission. These people who give to you on Giving Tuesday, guess what? These are future people who you can turn into recurring donors for your organization. I tell every nonprofit organization, 
as you move forward, you want to make sure you build a donor base. And so your strategy for moving forward should be to build your donor base. I have a, a campaign I do with my client where I show them how to be, a, uh, you know, how to get 100 new donors in 90 days or less. I show them how to do that and everything. And, uh, and you want to build that donor base. Keep building it every chance you get. That should be part of your strategy. Number eight, you want to encourage your donors to increase their impact with a matching gift drive. This is an excellent way for getting people to give. When you build a Giving Tuesday campaign around matching gift, you're doing two things, as you know. You're getting donors excited about increasing their individual impact and raising more money than your organization can do on its own. So to start those matching gifts drive, find an individual or another organization like a local business who is willing to match your donor. Gifts up to a certain amount on Giving Tuesday. Talk with them beforehand and get them engaged and get them engaged where they participate in your life as they work with people, but also get them an option of why they want to participate. They obviously want to highlight their brand. So get them an opportunity to do that with you. One of the things I tell people, this is not giving Tuesday, but Valentine's Day is coming up. As you think about campaigns, I tell nonprofit, if you're going to do something for Valentine's Day, I would start in late December or really early January, and I would reach out into my community for florists that are in my area, and I would find five or six or maybe more, and I would ask them all to participate and, and give an arrangement, a way to raffle out. And then you raffle off on social media where people, when they make a donation, they automatically enter to win that arrangement where they can give to a loved one or whoever. A great way to partnership with that, with that, with that florist business and everything, getting them engaged. Let them participate in kicking off your campaign. And when you're raffling it off and you're raffling off their, their gift that they're giving to you, let them participate in the drawing of it. It's a good way to engage. So you just got a great Valentine fundraising campaign. Also, uh, uh, to find partners, you can ask board members for recommendation. I don't have to tell you this. You can look at your local chamber of commerce. If you're not a member of it and you're a nonprofit organization, sign up to be a member. When that way you can target people who are in your network, who are looking for, who love getting public recognition for gift matching, and you're getting them engaged as you move forward. Uh, throw Giving Tuesday half party. I love this. House parties are fun events in which your supporters, staff, and board members host their family and friends in their home, and you encourage them to give to your cause throughout the event. This can be this can be done as in person, virtual, or even a hybrid event. Here's how to set one up: Have your supporter sign up to host one of the party, and be sure to provide them with a live stream link if your house party will be virtual or hybrid. Uh, number two, encourage your supporters to plan fun activities, entertainment, food for their party. You can even provide them supplies to make each house party branded and more connected to your organization. Give them materials and messaging templates for your organization, you know, for, for your supporters to send out invitations, whether through email, social media, or direct mail. On the day of check-in with your host to ensure things are going smoothly, attend the house party and spread the word about your organization mission. So you want to get people engaged and actively involved in it. One, number 10, you can set up an online giving store with a Giving Tuesday exclusive swag. It's fun for your supporters to get something in return for contributing to their favorite organization, which is your organization. So uh, some ideas, it could be hats, t-shirts, mugs, bracelets, posters, bumper stickers. And I know sometimes when you give things away, you have some people that say, well, you know, do you really need money if you're giving stuff away? Organizations do give something to show their appreciation. So, and you know, as a defense that it could be something somebody donates these things to you. So you're not you're not spending needed money to do those. But look at some creative way to reward your donors as well. Too. And you can publicize your online store by posting about it on social media. Don't forget to incorporate it into your own do online donation page. You know, uh, uh, ways to get involved, that should be in that tab on your web page moving forward as you move forward. Plus, every time someone wears your merchandise, they're promoting your cause. All right. Uh, but wait, there's more. We got five more tips for you that we want you, we want you to know about in everything. Number 11. Invite your supporters to a fundraising gala. A fundraising gala is very, very important. And if you do it right, plan it right, the key to doing it right 
is to find a partner that will sponsor it for you. And this is a way to get involved. This is what they do every year, sponsoring a gala. And, and, and I'm going to use I'm going to use a, a, a client of mine in Mississippi. They did, they do a, it's called a back to, I think, Jackson Gala they do and everything. And they were doing that and they, they dress up and they have a great time. And it's a great group of people entertainment, food, and they get donations and a variety of stuff. So you can send a save the date email, uh, you know, as you remind people what it is. You can, you can book a venue, entertainment and catering. Yeah, again, you, if you can, you want these things to be given to you as a sponsorship where you're not spending any money. But it's a great time where you can seek sponsor and seek auction items you can give away where people can donate on an item. And then that goes to your goes to your fundraising effort. Plan out donation appeals you can make throughout the event. Uh, giving Tuesday Gala is fun for your guests. But again, your main focus should be acquiring donations throughout the night. Now, plan out specific appeals you can make in between songs or activity. Get your get your gifts given throughout the night. You should also make it easy uh, for you know people to give as well too. Try try offering text fundraising option. Print out cards with a QR code. Guests can use to access your donation form. Now, one of the things I do, I tell clients all the time when they're working with me, let's do a QR code fundraiser. And what is a good way to get your board members engaged? And one way you get them engaged, you put their pictures on, on, uh, on a banner for the QR code. And when you do that, the QR code has the QR code where it goes to the organization donate page where they can make a donation. Those people, whether they're board members, supporters, advocates, they send their own picture with their QR code out to people in a network. That's part of the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising process, and they get people engaged. One of my clients we did this with, they had about 20 board members, and each one, when I was working with them, I asked them, uh, what's going to be your target to go? You're going to try to reach through your network. The average amount was $2,500 for, for their, each, each board person. And so they're still doing the fundraising because they turned it into a Giving Tuesday QR code fundraising. So they're still doing it and raising money every week for their organization. So a QR code, if you got board members that don't really do anything and don't really work, a QR code fundraising is a good way to get them engaged without killing them or scaring them or running them off. That's a good way to get them engaged. So try that. Also, you want to thank your guests for attending. Your gala should not be a one-hit wonder. You want to make sure you send out gracious thank you notes to everyone in attendance. Remember, those people in attendance, you are going to turn them into future givers of your organization. They're going to be recurring donors. Remember this when you're dealing with donors. They don't want to be viewed as an ATM machine. They want to be viewed as partners of your organization moving forward. So get them engaged, thank them, and let them know how important they are. One last idea, give it a theme. Consider throwing a holiday or season theme gala to celebrate the holiday season in the end of your campaign as well, too. Number 12, uh, uh, you can hold a one-day stock the pantry drive, and you have a lot of organizations that are doing this, depending on the nature of your organization. It may be beneficial to hold a stock the pantry drive for in-kind gifts on Giving Tuesday, like canned goods. You see high school, when it's football season, they collect a lot of food items. It could be something similar to that. Also, uh, when you come in, keep in mind, uh, stock the pantry drives are fun for supporters to participate throughout the year. But especially when they're coming off a weekend holiday with Black Friday and Cyber Monday, it's a great way to pick up items for your organization along the way. Whether you're collecting school supplies, clothing, canned food, canned goods, uh, Giving Tuesday gives you a chance to get many donations you can give to get engaged with people in your community. And as people volunteer and give, guess what? You can get these people to eventually become volunteers to your organization, as well as become recurring donors as they give. 13, I like a lot, where well, you can maybe host a concert. If there's, if there's a way you can do a concert, it may be a way to do it. One of the things when I was CEO of, of, of my nonprofit organization many years ago, we did a talent search for a fundraiser. Well, we, uh, we, we tailored it towards young people, but we did it and got people engaged and people participated, but it's a great fundraiser. We raised about $20,000 doing that fundraiser, but we got local people to engage, the people who was local from the community. It was fun and it gave young people something to do. So there's many different creative things you can do. You could access a porter, send in a song request, 
You can offer a way for donors to place a certain amount of money to dedicate a song to a loved one. You can sell branded merchandise or refreshment during the concert. You can even have vendors who are selling things in there where they, you can offer them vendor space that they can purchase, maybe $2,500 and up, where you can raise money. Also, you can make your concert holiday theme, which is always great, and offer a meet and greet with the performers for donors who give up to a certain amount. Remember, as you're doing this, you got to schedule this way in advance so you can plan it into your holiday season calendar moving forward. You could do a trivial night as well, too. Uh, trivial night is good. You can offer a price of a registration fee donation, match for the team that gets the most question right. You can encourage participants to donate to your cause throughout the event, sell those drinks and snacks. And that is always good because you can raise a lot of money, increase your profit level, include extra elements in your trivia game, like the opportunity to phone a friend or steal a question from another team. Make it fun and creative for your organization. And I don't have to tell you about this one. You can launch a major campaign. You know, uh, uh, it's a good way. Uh, uh, you may have, for instance, a goal of reaching 50% of your fundraising goal on the first day of your campaign. Uh, motivate your supporters by Tying your fundraising goal to something tangible. Try something like, for instance, if we reach our goal today, we'll be able to sign a contract and break ground. There, this is another giving Tuesday idea that'll pay off in the future. And you got to think of major things as you launch a major campaign on, on how you want to do it. We're at the part here, right here. You see my contact information. You can reach me at the number below, 601-812-7906, or through email. And my website is up there where you can cruise and check me out and see what I'm about. I'm on LinkedIn as well, too. And I definitely ask you to connect with me on LinkedIn because uh, if you connect with me on LinkedIn, I post a lot of free good resources on LinkedIn that I help you every day if you're in a nonprofit business. We're at the time, believe it or not, where it's Q&A, and I want to answer some questions in the chat that you may have about Giving Tuesday or anything nonprofit related or holiday season giving, shoot away. Simone? Yeah, I was going to say that's so much information. I know that you were talking fast because there was a lot to get in there, and I know there must be questions. So I wanted to make sure, because the chat's been very silent, which is, which is not common. If anyone has questions, raise your hand, ping me. Add in the Q and A. It's been super quiet, which is not normal normally. The case. <laughs> but I can also imagine everyone just writing a bunch of notes and trying to to keep up. So, if anyone has questions, now is the time. Um, because there's none coming in right away, I actually did have com some come in at registration that I always like to start with. Okay, Patricia. This actually. Uh, we have her registered. Patricia says, good information. Thank you. So that's for you, Michael. Thank you. Um, okay. So we have one that's about social media posting for Giving Tuesday and reaching donors. Do you have any specific tips on, I know you mentioned Twitter was good and celeb reaching out to celebrities, tagging and hashtags, but do you have any other examples that maybe you've used in the past or with some of your clients? Uh, yes, and definitely what, a couple of things I want to encourage you to do. I want you to go to givingtuesday.org. They got a lot of resources for you and ideas on what you want to do. You want to go there and sign up your organization. Then let, you know, and that's a great thing to do right there. Givingtuesday.org, start there. But also, uh, 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 as I mentioned, videos are definitely a great way. One of the things you can do is, is, uh, you could, for instance, do a one week where, a, a one week campaign. Well, another, it, it's not necessarily a giving Tuesday campaign, uh, like on social media, for instance. If you're on Facebook, you know, you're on Facebook, your friends have birthdays coming out. Every month, incorporate this strategy moving forward. When they're doing the birthday campaign, look every month and see who all the birthdays coming up for November, December, January, and reach out to your friends and ask them to do a campaign in lieu of birthday wishes, do a campaign for you all. Now, here's the key encourage them to make the first donation when they set their campaign up and ask them to tag two or three of their friends and say, I made this donation in honor of you. Can you return the favor and tag two or three people and make a donation in honor of them? And it gets it going and you can sort of reach your goal at what you're doing because well, that's been very successful. I've encouraged my clients to do. If your board members or supporters do just that, 
you will raise a lot of money for your organization coming out the gate. You're utilizing it. And, you, you know, they're going to people are going to wish them birthdays anyway. So why not sort of get them engaged and get them active on what your organization is about? When they tag two or three people, uh, uh, you sort of put them on the spot. And when they tag two or three people, you find kind of feel pressure. You got to make a donation because when somebody tag you and, and encourage you to make a donation and all eyes are on you on social media, you're going to be thinking about, oh, my God, my image. People see me. And so you're going to probably make a donation. It doesn't matter what the gift is, as long as you contribute and make a donation. So look at doing that strategy, you know, beyond giving Tuesday and getting people to engage. That's so important. And so you definitely want the reason you want a good platform system like Harness is because if you if you do it on Facebook, Facebook could take up to 30 days, 60 days or maybe longer to give your money back. But it could be sooner. And everything depending on who you are. But if you got a platform like Hornet set up, you can use their system and, and work with that person and they can use their system to, to do the campaign with and it goes right to the organization. A lot of organizations don't you don't want to wait 60 or 90 days for their donation. So keep that in mind with a good platform system. You can get it immediately and use that platform system as you post your information or help them do it. So look at that strategy and moving forward as well, too. Yeah, awesome. I had to hold back laughter because Brenda said she was writing as fast as she can. So <laughs> thank you so much for uh, that. That was really funny. So we are being asked uh, for a copy of the presentation, but I did let the chat know that you were offering your slides, Michael. So if yes. there's any additional questions, your contact information will be there. But yes, the slides will be sent out. All I right. also have a question. I have a few questions about Giving Tuesday deliverable strategy. And so during this presentation, I also shared a Harness Giving Tuesday playbook that has a lot of what Michael covered in as long as it or as well as a checklist and schedule. So I think that'd be really helpful for anybody who's looking for that. Um, we do have a question from Doris. She says, All I have is previous donor addresses, no internet contact. Uh, therefore, I'll be sending out a letter asking for donations on Giving Tuesday and asking for monthly renewal donations. If they do a monthly donation, they will receive some swag items. I'm sorry, that wasn't a question, but I think that's an awesome plan. Yes. You collect yes, more indeed. information. But um, Michael, if you have anything you want to comment to that. Yes, definitely. A good plan. And, and one of the things you want to do as well, too, don't just stop there. Get other people who are in your network to do the same thing, like board members. I know. Uh, uh, as you, I don't know how often your board meets for your nonprofit, but as they meet, get them in, they should be part of the fund development process. And what I mean by that is when you're raising funds, there should be a portion of the fundraising the board members do. What does that consist of? We know if you got a nonprofit board, they need to give their own personal gift or they're sitting on your board. That's key because uh, the reason is fundraising donors want to see that board is a giving board. So, if they, so make sure they're giving themselves to help support this call, but then also get them engaged in their fundraising efforts on what they can do. And it could be, as I mentioned, a QR code fundraising. I do what is called a $30,000 uh, $30, uh, in 30 days campaign where I get board members engaged and I get them to use their peer to peers to help raise $30,000. And it starts with them board members get, it starts with the board members themselves either identifying or giving. $250 a piece. I say to get this going, you need 15 people that's willing to give you $250. Starting out the gate. And then you get those 15 people to identify 10 people within their network that can do the same thing. They have to reach out to these people, tell them, you know, talk with them, cultivate them, and get them to give. But that's how it gets started. And that's what you do. And you can turn those people into to recurring donations, as, I mean, donors as well, too, as you move forward. So there's many different strategies you can use, but the key is to use all the people you need. And I always want to say, uh, uh, and, and, and and Simone, you can tell me this. Does Hornets have the system set up if if if, if nonprofits want to do video thank yous? Do you all have that system set up yet? We do. You can send that out through chat. Perfect. Or I'm sorry, through text message. That's the chat. Very good. I'm reading the chat. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That is perfect. And that's a good way to reach out to people and thank them and cultivate them. You know, if you're like me, you get 100 emails, you're going to check on, or you get a text message. Guess what you're going to do like I do? You're going to click on it and see who's texting you. And then you can look at that uh, thank you video for 40 seconds. It feels good. You're, it's making you part of the team as you move forward. So, so think about that. 
great. We have another question from Tom. Actually, I want to answer uh, a few people asking for the playbook or the checklist. Let me know. Okay. If, let me know. Okay, it looks like I will send it out by email with the recording if that's helpful for everybody. So I'll send it out later today. Uh, we do have a question from Tom. Uh, he says, what is the good reach for, what's a good reach when doing your campaign? Say that again, Simone, I'll read that question what, again. What is a good reach? So on, let's say social media in your experience, what is a good amount of people or impressions or reach amount of people? I, I would say if you could reach a hundred or more, it'd be great. And everything. Try to reach a hundred or more, and you can do that. And, and, and one of the ways you can do it, if your organization has its own uh, uh, Facebook page as well, you can get people to like that page and and talk to those people. But if you don't, uh, you can you can definitely uh, try your own friends. If you could try a hundred, I tell people every day as you're doing a campaign, a giving Tuesday campaign, if you make it a goal from now to November 29th to reach out to maybe two to five people a day, you accomplish what you need to accomplish to get engaged in you. So look at doing it that way strategically. We're getting them engaged. And again, you want to make sure, here's, I want to encourage you with this. I always tell my nonprofit clients or potential client, one of the first thing when they engage me and want my help, I want to look at that web page. I want to see if that web page says to me, uh, uh, do you know what you're doing? So you want to make sure your web page look good. You want to make sure that uh, that you got the information in there. You don't want a potential donor to look for your stuff. Be transparent in your web page. For instance, show them you're not hiding anything. Be willing to put your financial information in there. You know, a savvy person knows how to look up your 990. Go ahead and put it on your web page financial. You know, about us, it should be about us tab. And then in that about us tab should be financial, stuff like that, where people can see. If you got audited financial statements, put them in there. Because you showing that donor when they come to your LP, you're going to do due diligence with their money. You got nothing to hide. And you are being transparent. And, you know, and, and then if you got any core values, like with your mission statement, vision statement, you should have core values. And maybe one of the core values may be we're transparent in what we do. That lets a donor know, I can trust you with my money. Yeah. So absolutely. be willing to do those things. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yes. Um, if any other questions come in, we have two more minutes. Um, one thing, it's not specific to Giving Tuesday. It's a little bit beyond. But one person wants to know if you have any, I guess, details or examples of an end of year campaign cultivation timeline. So I know that could be a whole presentation on its own, but if you have yes. like a high level for all those people that are burning through paper with their notes. <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, and I don't want to put you on the spot, Simone. You probably got that too. Am I correct in assuming that? Well, we created one for Giving Tuesday. I'm sure okay. we can draft one up for end of the year, but this is end of the it's year from now me. through December. Yes, I, I do have some stuff. So feel free to reach out to me and I'd be happy to. I'd be happy to share, definitely. You got my information. Just reach out to me. Any information, make sure you specify what you're looking for. And I can give you some great end of your samples for what you need to hit the ground running. Perfect. So a lot of the other questions, I believe you covered. But if anyone has any other questions, um, the contact information, I'll put it back on the screen just to wrap up the presentation. So you can reach... Michael Dozier here. You could also email me either marketing at Harness Giving or my first name, Simone at Harness Giving. With any questions, I will be sure to get them over to Michael as well. But that does conclude our presentation. Thank you so much. This was an incredible, probably six months because we started in May, but this has been an yes. incredible webinar series. Thank you, Michael, for ending it with such a great presentation. Thank we do you. have that survey that I mentioned every webinar. It helps us improve our webinars. And I always read the feedback myself and we incorporate all the updates uh, based on the feedback. So thank you so much. I see some people were able to download. Either way, I will send it out with the recording. Michael, if you have any last words, you have- uh, just, ba just basically with my email is Dozier underscore Michael. And I'm looking at it and I don't, you don't listen to the underscore link, but it's Dozier underscore Michael. If you send it Dozier Michael, I will never get it just to let you know. Mm -hmm. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. That concludes our webinar and we will see you in 2023. Perfect. <laughs> Bye everyone.